Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and in today's show we have a special guest and we've got a special topic. So first up, the person, the guest, it is Mr Bilal Nazir. Bilal, welcome to the show. Thank you, pleasure being here. We have been waiting a long time for this. So have I. I'm <laughs> so excited about this. Yes, let me, you know, full disclosure, want to put everything on the table. I do already know this man. This guy's a bit of a legend. I've met him through Paul McFadden's Property Protégé Training. And the stuff that he's doing in the property world and how he's helping so many other people as well. I just had to have, had, have him on the show. I need to change my teeth. Uh, we're going to discuss a very special topic because it's something that he's very skillful in and he's getting a lot of success in. And there's also been a lot of changes recently in this area as well. So we've got a lot to chat about. But first of all, the man, the myth, the legend, you yourself, Bilal. What's the backstory? What's the background? You know, because I know a lot of the things that you're up to just now. We're going to chat about that. And then we're going to chat about a lot of legislation and stuff that's changing as well. But what was life before this? You know, pre-property. What's your background to everything? So pre-property, um, I think it's similar to a lot of people in the protege um, tribe. Right. Is I had no experience in property. Nothing right, to do that. with property. I love that. Uh, yeah, like <laughs> literally nothing. I hadn't even thought about property. Um, as such, uh, my background, um, I did an accountancy at uni. Um, so I was thinking of going into finance. Right. Didn't really work out. I'm not, wasn't too keen on, you know, sitting in the office doing some numbers. <laughs> so I, I, was, I wasn't that kind of person. Right. So I ended up most of my career working in retail service, um, you know, customer service, sales, ah, uh, revenue right. growth, you know, revenue management. Uh -huh. And then I worked a bit in a uh, uh, warehouse as well. So like, you know, accuracy, you know, that, ah, that sort of all thing. All the logistics and everything. Logistics. Of That's it funny stuff, hearing you yeah. saying that because I know what you're going to be discussing yeah, this stuff, yeah. right? Okay, so you had um, that as well. So yeah, we're working on that side of the, the business, um, um, like all my career really until... Mm -hmm. I think it was last August uh, mm -hmm. when my best friend and also uh, my business partner now uh, introduced me to service accommodation. Right. Uh, and this that was my kind of in into property. Right. So that, so that's was that something they were already doing themselves? Yeah. So yeah. They'd, be, they'd been doing it a year prior to me. Right. And they'd obviously seen... Well, th it's funny because they, they started doing this at a very funny time because it was during COVID. Oh, God. Yeah, so oh, wow. they, they started doing it at a very, very funny time. But wow. obviously, as the COVID restrictions were easing, he was seeing the results like, okay, you know what? This can actually be quite lucrative. Yeah. So he then, you know, mentioned it to me. I got involved, started doing a bit of research. And to be honest, I just put everything in without doing wow. too much research. I just took a gamble. And I was like, I know, I know I shouldn't be saying this, and it's not something I recommend that's, to anybody. It's not something you'd hear from an accountant, you know, after exactly. all that training of risk and everything else. Exactly, just, exactly. Wow. This was pre-protege, that's why. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I ended up uh, obviously starting off the, the service accommodation um, side, or self-catering side, which yeah. we'll go into. Um, this is a wee thing we want yeah. to chat about, yeah, um, I love it. So I went, started going, doing that in August, September um, last year. And then January one uh, afternoon, sitting there um, in the living room on Facebook, and then I seen Paul McFadden pop up. Oh, um, God, God yeah, help you. Exactly. I know. I know. <laughs> I was traumatised <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the Jumpstart event uh, that was right. on that same weekend uh, in Glasgow. Right. So I was like, you know what? It's property related. I need Aye. to learn more about property. I don't really know much about. I know that I'm doing the service accommodation, yeah. but I don't really know much about um, property. So I'll be good and kind of. Just to, even if I don't do anything else after that, just to kind of get to know about the property. Yeah. Um, lo and behold, ended up going to um, Jumpstart. Absolutely love it. Obviously, you know, the energy that I saw at Jumpstart ah, events. Yeah. It was absolutely brilliant information you get. Really pumped up. Uh, and then I ended up uh, signing up to Protege yeah. um, to kind of expand my knowledge and, you know, like invest in myself to get to know more about the property. Love it. Um, and get to kind of know that side of, of the, the industry, essentially. Yeah, it's good, man. Fantastic. I love when someone has no background in it. Because <laughs> I, th I think it just it, it shows the point that anybody can do this. Yep. You know, you've, you've got the right knowledge, you've got to take the right action. Yeah, of course, you know, it's not just a overnight success thing, but you don't have to be in the, you know, you need to be a builder, you need to be in the construction. No, you don't. No, yep. you don't. In fact, exactly. it can sometimes be an impediment to you because, you know, you've got that tunnel vision with how mm -hmm. something should be with property. Brilliant. Right, now you've unleashed the topic for today, service accommodation, or yep. we might throw different labels around and stuff. So... I'm conscious of folks listening in, watching in. A lot of them will know it. But, oh, right, right, this will be fascinating to hear about. 
A lot of them won't. What, what do you mean? All I've heard about is, you know, homes under a hammer stuff. Yeah. I'll, I'll just go and I'll do up a place and sell it on. What, what, do, what does he mean by this? So let's start to, you know, put the, the dummy hat on and explain the basic principles of this. So a property, I could get it and have it for myself, just yep. stay in it. Uh, I could be an investor. So I get the same property, but I rent it out. So I've rented out to one tenant yep. and I'm, you know, buy to let. All these things that people listening in are no doubt familiar with. And I'm getting a rental thing off of that. Great. What's the difference when we talk about this market and, and how good can it be, because we both know this, cash flow-wise? So, obviously, cash flow-wise, you already know that it's, it's very, <laughs> very lucrative. You could look at probably sometimes, you know, five to ten times more than a standard buy-to-let yeah. um, cash flowing. And the main, the main difference here is that you do have one tenant. You're obviously having guests coming in for, you know, maybe a week at a time, two weeks at a time, a month at a time, yeah. or two months at a time. It could be slightly longer than it doesn't necessarily. I think the perception is with service accommodation or self catering units is it's only two night bookings, one night booking, That's three right. night bookings. Yeah, because some folks That's who are listening, and as soon as we said service accommodation, mm. their brain said what Airbnb, Airbnb yeah. didn't it? Of course it did. <laughs> oh yeah, I've used that. But yeah. I've, I've stayed away, you know, a wee night after a wedding yeah. or uh, a nice weekend in a city or something, mm. and it can be that, as yeah. you say, but. A lot of the money's in a different market, isn't it? It's these, right. Is it workers travelling to places, yeah. that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we call that the contractor market. Right. Um, right. So that's the market that, and obviously every area is different uh, yeah. where you operate. Um, and you'll have your, you know, your peaks and your troughs depending on what is it a tourist demand right now? Is it a contractor demand right now? And you have to kind of work around that. Yeah. Like just take Edinburgh for example. When you've got the summer period, it's a high tourist of kind course. of demand. So you, then you'd be more catering towards your two night bookings, three night bookings right. because the revenue is much higher. Yeah. Whereas when you're now going into the off peak season, you want want to like you know look at your discounts for your longer term bookings to get the contractors in, the workers that are in the city, the engineers, you know, the surgeons, the doctors, yeah. uh, the nurses, etc. You know these kind of people. So you really have to kind of um, know your market essentially mm. and then you kind of work around work around that aspect but the main the main difference between obviously a buy to let and um a self-catering unit is the fact that you you don't have a guaranteed tenant so yes. it's purely based on demand and how you market your property and how you're targeting these uh, clients that you're looking for yeah. but it's great a lot of people think it's as easy as putting on airbnb <laughs> and people are going to come all over that. the world just pick your place and that's it done yeah it's not as easy or no simple as that there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background you know yeah. Making sure you've got the listing, the right copy on the listings, the right photographs, you've got the right pricing strategy, you know, mm. um, you have the right kind of, you know, your reviews, your, your customer service levels, it yeah. all plays a part in that as well, which is what we kind of really, really focus on. To yeah, ensure that we build you, that. you cover the whole management aspect of it as well, yes. which we're going to uh, dive into. You know, the, the word you mentioned there, service, I, th I think that's probably, if, I, if an investor is listening in, that's the main difference here. Because, you know, if I'm just a buy to late investor, I'm thinking about my asset, the property. And then the person who's bringing that revenue in, that's the tenant. Yep. Now, yes, of course, I want to, if I'm a good landlord, I want the property to be nice. I want to, you know, do a good job. I want to have a good letting agent in there. I want to want to get them to go through the whole process of vetting the right person there. Yep. But they're going to be there for a long time. That's what I'm going for. And there's, I don't want to say there's less input, but there's going to be a more demand in me if I actually have to provide a service yeah. because I might have you for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden I need to entertain someone else. I'm a host, I'm yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. I'm not just an, an investor. Whether I'm doing it myself or whether it's through one of your great companies that you're managing it for, I have to provide a service. I have to host. It's a right. totally different mindset, isn't it? Absolutely. You, Absolutely. Does your kind of, would you say your retail background? I'm just thinking back to how you started. Has that helped you? Because you're, you've you always had to think about the customer, haven't you? Customer service. Massively, massively. Because yeah. ever since my first job to my last job, uh, before I uh, ended up quitting it all and going full-time in property, <laughs> it's always been based around customer service. That's yeah. always been the forefront of everything we do. Uh -huh. um, and I'm a strong believer of you know customer service and sales. Mm. They, they go hand in hand. Like mm. You provide the great customer service and the sales comes after that. Yes. And if you're not able to provide that level of service, 
you're not able to grow your business because if you don't yeah. have the service, you don't have your repeat customers, you don't have that's the right. word of mouth, you know, like it, it all trickles down. Yeah. So that, that's very, very important part of me. And just who, who I am as a person, that service is very, very important. Yeah. And I take great care on every single guest that we deal with. Yeah. Um, you know, making sure that they're tr um, treated right, they have the right communication. Because great customer service is not always just being nice to the person. No, no, of course. It's, uh, of it's, course. You know, it goes down to communication with them. Yeah. How have they been communicated? Do they know exactly where they're going? Do they know what they're doing? Yeah. Do they know what they need to do once they get in there? Yep. Do they know what's available to them, what's not available to That's them? That's right, all the kind of local stuff yeah, and, you know, exactly. handy things you can share with them. Yeah, exactly. Totally. So it's like, it's like a whole package and that's, yeah. that's very obviously key to us um, and we really focus on that. Mm -hmm. we, we always truly believe that if you focus on that, the money will follow. It's yes. not a case of chase the money That's and then right. the, the customer service at the back end. Yeah. Focus on the customer service and the money will follow after it's, that. It's natural. Yeah. It is going to come. Yeah. And you're right. It's the, the repeat customers, it's the reviews, the ratings, yeah. all those kind of things. Because, I mean, if I think of myself going through Airbnb as a customer, those are the things I'm checking. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll look at the photographs, yep. I'll look at the location, obviously looking at the price. It's yep. always a thing when uh -huh. a customer's there. But you are, you're scrolling down and saying, look, they treated us very well. Yeah. The place is immaculate. Uh, local stuff nearby was so much fun. You are going to that level of detail. Yep. It's not just that quick and simple bite to let thing of, it's got three bedrooms and the rent is such and such. Yep. I'm going to go for it. It's not like that. It's a totally different level, isn't yep. it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Brilliant. The difference from being that bite to let investor, which I'm quite sure a lot of folks listening in are, to try and change to that market, what do they have to consider? Because there's a lot of differences there, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, for example, the, the kind of finance side of the puzzle. Yeah. It's a different thing. If, I, if I'm a, an investor with a buy to let and I've got a buy to let mortgage, for example, the service accommodation market, that short layer market, whatever you want to call it, that's a different thing as well, isn't it? So I need you to think about commercial mortgages, this kind of thing, yeah? So it's a great point uh, that you make there, Richard. It's uh, So if you're doing special lending wise and you're looking to go into the SA market, you get specific um, buy to SA mortgages right. or depending if you're going larger scale then potential commercial um, lending as well. Yeah. So you do get different products, interest rates can be different, you know, the terms can be different, the loan to value um, could be you know, yeah. different as well. So it is really important to consider that. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the other thing you need to consider as well, obviously with a standard buy to let, you just pay the mortgage and your insurance and your letting agent fee, maybe. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And, that, and then you're getting the cash flow. That's right. When you're going down this route, you're still liable for, you know, the council tax or business rates, depending on what route you go down. Great point. Um, your utilities, your Wi Fi, your TV license, yes. you know, um, everything you have to pay for um, uh -huh. yourself. That included, it's still a great cash flowing product, still depending on, the, depending on right. the area. Yeah, depending <laughs> on the area and if you're doing it right and you've got the right um, kind of. A person involved in that as well. Yeah. So a lot of people, what I see is try to do it themselves, which is great. Mm -hmm. From experience, it's not, unless that's the only thing you're doing, yeah. it's not a great thing to do it yourself because right. if you're, for example, an investor, you're trying to grow your portfolio mm. and then you're distracted all the time with guests coming in, guests exactly. going out, getting the cleaning sorted, getting the, you know, the place ready, any potential maintenance issues, yeah. and you're not, you're not given too much time to then focus on yourself to then build your portfolio or whatever your goals may be yeah and um, so it's very important that i'm not saying although i do offer the service not me but any like management company i would if it's not your sole purpose of like doing essays yeah. uh, and you're full time in it like yeah. myself then i would suggest going to like a management company and mm -hmm. getting them to manage it but it's very obviously be careful who you choose as a management company because there is a lot of um as you would say, cowboys out there. Cowboys, cowboys <laughs> and sharks. Exactly. That's just business, isn't it? Yeah. 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 No, that's a brilliant point because, yeah, the back to that investor thing, an investor is an investor. You know, the, the person who tries, just come back to that bite to let thing, I'm going to get my bite to let and I'm going to manage it myself. Okay, you're now a letting agent. Yep. You're, you've stopped being an investor. Mm -hmm. So all those phone calls and all those headaches and all those things that are going to come to you, it's because you've decided you're going to try and become a letting agent. Yep. We, we, teach not to do that. Mm -hmm. No, be an investor because that's how you can then grow on and get another one and another one and another. That's yep. an investor. Exactly. So who does that? The, the headaches, the management, the daily stuff. It's that expert. It's that letting agent mm -hmm. in that scenario. Same thing in this. If we try and use this strategy, this tactic, this area we, we say, you need to get the right expert exactly. to then manage yep. your asset because yep. you're an investor I think it's always remembering that you know having that mindset Absolutely. Uh, and it's a great point about the mindset on the, the numbers so yes the cash flow is a lot higher 
because it's not just you know one monthly rent coming through it's this person for four weeks that person for a weekend and you know it's much much bigger so yes you've got a bigger cash flow it's bigger income sorry but you've got to then factor in the expenses. expenses so yeah. you, you ticked off a few of them so just remind folks what services should we be providing what's the things that you spoke about the council tax unlike the bite of late we're taking that on yeah. we've got that stuff a TV, this kind of thing. What goes through your brain when you speak with someone and you're trying to get a place, a place properly set up? So it's a standard across all properties, really, because, um, like I said, depending on, realistically, if you're doing um, a service accommodation for a certain amount of nights, and I think it's like seven months, I need to double check that again, but you need to be on business rates as opposed to council tax. So you need to go. take that into, into consideration. Yeah. So you've got business rate slash council tax yep. um, you've got your utilities so your gas electric yep. um, you then have your TV license yeah. you've got your Wi-Fi if you want any um, you know TV products uh, Virgin Sky whatever it may That's be kind of Netflix you know, yeah Netflix etc yeah, yeah. you need to take that um, into consideration as well yeah. um, you also got to remember that you need to really furnish the property as well so that's a cost yes. as well although it's not a monthly cost yeah. but is it initial cost because as a buy to let you can give it unfurnished yeah. try doing an unfurnished essay it's not going to work that's not going <laughs> to sleep be on popular. the floor bring the sleeping bag with you <laughs> minimalist apartment <laughs> bring own pillow <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but as it shows you, it's a yeah. real different mindset. Yeah. It's a different uh, market. It's a different numbers, different lending, yeah. different uh, considerations, yeah. loads of different legislation and stuff. And mm -hmm. that's changed recently, which we'll chat about. Uh, but so your company, when you think about that management piece, do you go in with a certain kind of checklist, hit list, and you're chatting with that investor saying, well, to be honest, this, this furniture isn't going to cut it. We need more. We can provide that. How do you attack a place when you first so come in? So the first thing we do is look at whether, before we look at the kind of standard of the place or anything like that, because obviously that can be changed, yeah. right? And we can work on that. Yeah. The first initial uh, thing that we need to look at is demand. Is there right. demand there? Because right. the market. Yeah, the market. Right. Because you, you, may, you may think essays work everywhere. Yeah. They don't work everywhere because you need people to be wanted to go to a certain place. Yeah whether it's workers or contractors, whether it's tourists, whatever it is. Yeah. That, so that's the first thing we look at is like, okay, when anybody, anybody's approached me so far, first thing I'd be doing, okay, give me the address, give me the, the, the kind of lowdown, how many bedrooms, bathrooms, what kind right. of property is it? And then what I do, like free of charge, I don't charge anybody for this. It's like, okay, let me do some research on this for you. Right. Let me see, does it work in terms of what the revenue could be potentially be? Uh, does it work for the investor? Does it work for me? Because at the end of the day, we have a brand to adhere to as well. Yeah. If it's a property that's not going to meet our standards, yeah. it doesn't look as nice as we would like to look or it doesn't have to provide the services that we want to provide, mm -hmm. we're not going to take that on because any property, even though it may not be our property, mm -hmm. it's still our brand name attached to it, yeah. which is very, very important to us. So we you know, look at, look at all aspects in terms of Right, um, what, what kind of market is there? Is there a contractor market there? Is there stuff nearby? Is there hospitals nearby? Is there, you know, um, universities nearby? Is there any works going on? Is there big projects in the area? Exactly, all the, um, you know, bridges getting built. Exactly, yeah. Various, you know, railway stations mm -hmm. and all sorts of things. It's amazing that people don't realise how much activity goes on exactly. at that contractor market, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's, I think that's the key thing that we look at first and then right. work on the base numbers. Like, this is what we, we expect that you can achieve. Right, uh, we never guarantee it because no, obviously you never know with the economy things, especially with the way things are right now. It's going yeah. up and down, up and down. Yeah. So you, we, we know we kind of predict that this is what we expect it to be. Mm -hmm. And if the investor's happy and we're happy with the numbers, then we could start looking at the next stage. Right. What do we need to do? The property does it need a refresh? Does it need a full refurb? Does it need what kind of furniture does it need in it? Like mm. you know, basic stuff. Yeah. Like we have like a standard checklist of what we need in a kind of every. Every property, right? Yeah, you're going to go through that. You're going plan. to go through that. Okay. So like, you and know. what kind of locations do you cover at the moment? You know, if someone's listening in, I've, I've quite fancy changing my property. But where do you operate as a the management perspective that you could provide that service? So currently, all the operating in Scotland, so all right. over Scotland, all I'm over happy Scotland. to um, look into. Mm -hmm. um, if it's further away, like I'm based in Hamilton, so mm -hmm. if it's further away, like you're talking Inverness, etc. Yeah, I'm happy to look at it. If the numbers work, then. Because obviously it is a bigger distance. Yeah. The numbers have to work for, for us to, you know, yeah. walk into that area as well. But predominantly like the central belt area. Right, across and, the central yeah, belt. Yeah, and, right. and that area. Oh, yeah. So we're currently, for example, we're currently in Ayr, um, Edinburgh, Grangemouth, Dundee. Um, so that's the kind of areas we're in currently. Brilliant. So we, are, we are, it's kind of a mix um, in that kind of area. Yeah. But yeah, that's the sort of central belt area that we, yeah. can, we can look you at. You know, I love the fact that your first step is thinking like an investor. I love that <laughs> because 
I love that as an investor because that means you're coming to me and, and you're not one of those cowboys. You're not just saying, oh, yeah, yeah, sign this contract. Or you, or you want to change it to SA. I no bother. Right? Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll start charging you. Yeah, sign this contract. Yep. No, no, no. Hold, hold on. I'm going to check the market first. Yep. Is, is this going to work yep. for the two of us? You know, an actual relationship, a mm-hmm. business relationship. I bloody love that. And then it's keeping me right as well. I mean, I should have done my own research, of yep. course, Absolutely. before I even think about it. But we can kind of cross-check with each other. Maybe I, I know something that's happening in the area or something coming. I love the fact you're starting with the numbers, with the supply and demand, because as an investor, I then know my asset is going to get looked after properly. Yep. I love that. Absolutely. And then are you able to kind of hold my hand through that whole process? You're going to kind of take over things and just keep me right? You know, we're going to organise the, the business rates change or we've organised the, the linen and stuff. You know, is it one of those kind of hand-holding processes you do with me? Yeah, so I would say I try to guide anybody I'm working with as much as possible mm-hmm. um, in regards to like how we're going to go forward, what we need to do, what we need to install like. For example, we get we, we, our requirement is every property that we manage or we have our own is to have the obviously Ian mentioned it a few weeks ago in the in the tribe as well the the minute sensors or the minute right. sensors. I don't I don't think anybody knows how to actually pronounce it, but the <laughs> the, the noise sensors essentially. The noise sensors. Yeah, which obviously yes. detect any excess noise or any excess kind of if it's cloud detection as well. So if it's yeah. a lot of people. So we require that as a minimum. To, really? Oh, that's and it's brilliant. not, it's, wow. it, obviously, for the ones that we have ourselves, the main reason we have it is to ensure that we're not annoying neighbours, yeah. but also we're protecting the asset as well, because if yeah. there's parties, etc., going on, going on, then that, that sensor will no, no, obviously notify noise, but also notify the fact that there's a lot of people in the place yes. because it, it, it works on Bluetooth and it just figures out how many people are in the in the, in the the vicinity. Wow. So like, for example, we would recommend that to all, all any people that we work with right. um, as a minimum. Also like smart thermostats, for example, um, ah. which is very important now considering we're going <laughs> into... Cost you, of, yeah, exactly. Oh goodness, um, yeah. The cost of it. <laughs> But it's easy enough, like most guests will maybe go, go in and like full blast it because they're not paying for it, they don't yeah, care. Exactly. They'll just fill, put it on full and just leave it. Yeah. And that's when I come in and my company comes in and we manage it, we look at it, okay, well, the guest has left or there's not been any movement in there, let's turn wow. the heating down again and like try to save money that way as well. That's fantastic. Um, which is the, 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 the great thing about management and people that you want to use our management services is that we put the same amount of work into a um, property that we manage. Mm-hmm. As we do in our own property, love it. So the although it's same yeah, mindset. although it's significantly less cash flow for us, yes. But the work and effort we put in is exactly the same. That's so good. essentially, the investor's getting really a bargain. Oh, not half. <laughs> because yeah. you know, it's, it's like everything's taken care of from A to Z. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Furniture wise, what, what do you you know suggest to them? Do you do you speak about renting? Is it purchasing? Do you offer any kind of connections to people? How do you, how do you treat that? So I would personally, you can rent it, but I personally, I just suggest buying. It's probably yeah, yeah. just just better off buying. Yep. But then it's just that, you know, initial cost, you know what you're paying and that's it done, done. rather than have that monthly. Because if you do have a monthly and you have a bad month, for example, then you have to worry about cash flow. Yeah. Because like, not every month, like when we look at numbers, for example, so like going back onto that point, mm-hmm. we don't look at, oh, oh, this is how much we're going to earn this month or this is what we're going to earn this month. Mm-hmm. We look at a 12 month period. Right. And then we work out the average. Right. Say, for example, the average is that your, your revenue is going to be £1,500, just throwing a number out in the air, yeah. £1,500 a month. Uh-huh. It doesn't mean that every month is going to be £1,500. Of course. Some month could be £500, some month could be £3,000, yeah. you know? So yeah. it's, it's very important that you, if you already know what your exact costs are, you've already invested in your furniture, yeah. then it's less of a cost. When you rent furniture, you're adding extra costs, you're paying interest on it, you know, it's True. not, nobody's going to give it to you for, for free to rent it as well. Yeah. So we, we recommend um, purchasing, um, purchasing right. the furniture. Okay. In terms of contacts, we don't, we just look at deals everywhere, really. So it's not specific right. because what, what we found previously is that these, these places offer discounts and whatnot, but they tend to be much more pricier. Whereas right. depending on where you are at the time, what location you're in, yeah, where, where you can go to, like, you know, uh, get buy this furniture at different places. Yeah. Like a lot of people we worked with, they've bought stuff off like Facebook Marketplace or right. Gumtree and stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be brand new. Yeah. As long as it's good quality, yep. it doesn't necessarily have to be brand new as well. Yeah. So it's like, you know, these sort of things that we look at and we want to do as cost efficient as proper, uh, as much as possible. Yeah. But at the same time, good quality as well. You don't want really cheap stuff that's going to break within two nights, you know. Exactly. Or, yeah, the whole buy cheap, buy twice thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. But then again, you don't want, depending on the quality of the apartment as well, you don't want to buy something that's really, really expensive, really high end because... Yeah. Obviously, with the uh, SA turn, turn around the guests, there's more people in and out, more chances of you know damages, etc. As well, mm. which is a risk that you have to consider. I'm not going to lie to any investors listening in. Of course, that is a risk. But then you have that same risk with a tenant. If yeah. you got in for a one year, two years, 
you don't know what kind of place you're going to get back after that time. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's risk in both both kind of avenues or both strategies. Yeah, I love it. I'm going to, I'll keep playing investor here. This is good. Because <laughs> I kind of draw stuff out and there's investors obviously listening and watching as well just now. So when you're going to be marketing the place, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of taking you on as that, that manager and you're operating the thing for me. What do we think about there? You know, are you hitting certain platforms? Is it, oh, it's all just Airbnb? No, 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 we do elsewhere. How do you kind of follow through that process? So we have uh, four four platforms mainly that we right. focus on. Uh, the, main, the two biggest by far are Airbnb and Booking.com. And that's right. just known, like, you'd be silly not to be on those platforms right. because that's where the majority of the traffic comes um, from. And uh -huh. uh, the third one is uh, VRBO. Um, not as great, right. yeah. but it's great just for visibility as well, you know, being being on this platform as well. Uh -huh. Is that one more American? I mean, it what, is, it a, tends to be, but yeah. sometimes American, but we have had bookings from people in the UK on VRBO yeah. as well. Sometimes it's companies that are, are using VRBO, like it might be an American ah, company, I see, of but course. the employees are based in... Uh, like their corporate head office is in America and they're booking for their employees, for example. Yeah. So it's... it's, it's gotcha. Uh, yeah, there's no harm on being on it. It doesn't cost you anything to be on it. Aye. You only get charged for when once the booking comes in. Yep. So there's no harm on being on these kind of platforms as well. Mm -hmm. And lastly, the last platform is um, our website. Mm -hmm. So our own website, dedicated website ah, right. with our dedicated booking platform on, on that as well, which we try to focus more guests towards mm -hmm. because it's cheaper for them, first of all. Exactly. Uh, because they don't have to worry about all the Airbnb fees, all the uh, booking.com fees. Yeah. So it's cheaper for them and they're, you know, it's, it's a bit more flexible for them as well in terms of what they want to do. And recently, actually, um, I, I should mention this, but recently we've... Uh, I've been doing a lot of research into um, cryptocurrency. So All recently right. we re realized it's a big market for cryptocurrency. So just over the last month, uh, we've now started accepting cryptocurrency as payment. No, no way. Yeah, oh, yeah. you're ahead of the game. Yeah. This is so, fun. So we just recently, <laughs> just last month, um, we started Probably. doing it. Um, not had any booking with crypto yet. But, it's but there. you know, it's there. If yeah. anybody wants to, you know, go and use their crypto for something, Fantastic. Well, we'd be happy to take that. Um, and, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, you have to be innovative. Um, you have yeah. to see where the market's going. And I see... It's not just a case of, oh, crypto, yeah, why not just do it? Yeah. A lot of research has gone into it, like, okay, where's the market going? What are people doing? What are yeah. the trends? What kind of people are using crypto? Is it, like, mainly, in, like, workers? Is it contractors? What kind of people are using crypto? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's what we kind of looked into, and, yeah, so we've started doing that uh, as of last month. So, I yeah, love it. looking forward to our first booking with that. Ah, definitely. So, logistics. My, uh -huh. my, my brain's going back to you chatting about being in the warehouses and all the systems and yeah. everything. I mean, that's got to be there because I'm thinking, you know, that that bite you let guy, he's just got that same tenant day after day after mm -hmm. day. Whereas now I am a host. Now I'm taking care of guests, yeah. all these words. Now I'm providing services, yeah. you know, again, all these words and labels. The second day out, your team's having to, you know, dance around yeah. everything, get the place ready for the next guest, yeah. for the next guest, for the next guest. That must be something to organise. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes back to kind of, Obviously, what you mentioned back in uh, back when I was at Protege um, as well. So when I first started, um, and and the, the reason this is one of the reasons why I've only started doing management recently, right? Because there was no point in me offering management when I don't know what I'm doing myself. I uh, love I, it. I'd be kind of you know <laughs> pointless, and I'd, I I wouldn't want any investors losing out on money. Yeah. So when I first started doing in August September, I was like a headless chicken running you know, off pillar to post. <laughs> like, okay, I need to sort this out. I need to change the prices here. I need to do this cleaning. I need to message WhatsApp this person or message this person. This cleaners you here. That cleaners you there. So it was a bit you know kind of all over the place. Yeah. But what we have now is you know systems and processes. You know, oh, like man. it's all systemized. Love it. So everything like. Somebody books a, a place, the cleaner's notified. So they have it in their diary straight away. Right. Like, okay, the cleaner's due on this day. Right. And they know exactly when the guest is leaving. They know when the next guest is coming in, how many people are leaving, how many people are coming in. Um, so that that, that that whole aspect systemized. Fun. Guest messaging as well, we've systemized that as well. Uh -huh. So if somebody books, they get a message coming through to them. This mm -hmm. is, you know, thank you for booking. Um, Bloody bloody blah. blah, blah. Um, obviously, when they come closer to the date, we start sending them like locations. Like this is the Google Map location, so you can click on this link. It takes us straight to the property, as opposed to you figuring out where the property is. Yeah. So you know, like all like, all the small things. It's based around customer service. But it's also communication as well, but it's all systemized. Yeah. So I'm not physically having to do it. So the only time I physically or any of my team physically get involved, you know, doing these things is when a guest sends a specific inquiry. Right. So gotcha. like during a stay, they're like, oh, um, I may have this issue or can you help me with this or uh -huh. do you know anything like that? Then we right. get involved because obviously 
we don't want them to think they're just talking to a robot or exactly. they have to have that human interaction as like well. But the basic again. stuff is all systemized, like, yeah. you know, thanking them for the booking, their location, their checking instructions, mm -hmm. thanking them when they leave, you know, that sort of that stuff is automated. Right. But the rest of the stuff, any specific inquiries, et cetera, then me or my team deal with it and it's more kind of personalized to the actual guest itself. Right, gotcha. So that's why it's all... Although it seems a lot, but remember this did, this took time as well. It wasn't a case of I'll overnight. Right. This did this got done. This yeah. this is, uh, this is work of months and months in terms of get tweaking like what works in terms of messages, yeah. what works in terms of you know the cleaning teams, what cleaning team works, what doesn't, what mm -hmm. services they provide, what services they don't provide. Mm -hmm. Like we've been through a few cleaners as well because yeah, cleaning, of course, in this industry, um, for what we do, the cleaning team is probably the most integral part of what we yeah, do aye, that's true because without a good cleaning team that you can rely on uh -huh. everything falls apart exactly you know so that's and it is uh, one of those first that I'm god I know it everyone we went to you know my, my partner will immediately have a look about the place like, what are you doing <laughs> I'm just seeing how clean it is oh my god I'm trying to see what's on the telly or something but <laughs> it is it's true you know yeah. it'll put you off a place yeah. or it'll really make you feel good about a place exactly. so you've got to have it nailed right exactly I love it and th that service aspect you know the guests coming in uh, do you have a mentality of you know providing them with some kind of uh, a welcome pack or uh, a gift that's arriving when they come or you know the information about here's what's local and nearby and attractions and stuff do you have that in your head as well so um we have we, we do we don't do any welcome packs as such right. but every property is like provided like a not a welcome pack as such, but like a small kind of you know like your tea coffee sugar kind of aye, stuff aye. like basic basic yeah. amenities but not like a welcome pack as mm. such if we do get like a really big, big booking, you know, it's a really good booking long term, you know, guest, mm. then we would go out of the way and to put a provider welcome pack right. um, for that. But for your normal booking, then it'd just be just the logistics of it. It's not Aye. it's not the, the, the ideal, yeah. especially because we're not our properties. We're not really, like, really high end. We're not charging high end prices, right. whereas gotcha. any properties that we would be like high end prices, then yeah. at welcome pack, it's, it's a different clientele. You would match that, of yeah, course. it's a different clientele. Exactly. Somebody paying like the, like the prices that we're charging, or you know, they don't expect that kind of you know welcome pack and that. But it's something to look at um, in terms of guests, like nearby stuff. Yeah, so a lot, a lot of our properties have. Um, we, we make it kind of interactive. So a lot of properties have like kind of a blackboard sort of inside right. it. Yeah. Right, okay. So like on the blackboard, they'll have like nearby restaurants that we recommend or like you know, contact numbers or nearby venues that you can go to. Yeah. Um, local taxi number, for example. You know, that oh, sort yeah. of stuff. So it's kind of That's interactive. Good. And really spends it as well. So if anybody wants to, you know, have yeah. a wee scribble or leave any notes or stuff like that. <laughs> so we try, we try to do that, kind of make it a bit interactive for the guests as well. I like um, it. I like it. But yeah, we do share information about like, I mean, we're actually working on something that's really going to kind of up the game in that sense. So we're working right. uh, with a company, um, hopefully by the end of this year to get it live. And it's going to be like a, like a Echo, not Amazon Echo device. Yeah. And it's going to have everything kind of preloaded onto it. Oh, so right, like okay. you, can, you can ask like, okay, what can I do today? Or uh -huh. what can I do? Or I want to check out later. Uh, uh -huh. I want to extend my stay. Or can you can you, can you put me in touch with the owner <laughs> or the manager, for example? So yeah. It's going to be very, very interactive. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm big on technology. So I yeah. love a bit of technology. And I think a lot of people, especially in this world now we live in, yeah. rely on technology and love that technology aspect as well. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. So hopefully by the end of this year, it's sort of like a guest book, but mm -hmm. also enables you to contact the, the, the management team as well at the right. same time. So it's, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that, yeah, but more fun. details, obviously, once that is near, near the time of going out. live, yeah. Fantastic, good man. I was going to, we, we've covered a couple of things with, you know, that whole difference between the bike light investor and this SA yep. investor, been talking about mortgages and everything else. I was I was going to start to ask you about other things like insurances and this that and the other, but you know what we'll do? That that will be the perfect time to to segue us into a, a, another part of having this chat today. Mm -hmm. Big big changes in Scotland. Huge. Huge. Um, massive legislation changes have been put through. Been talking about it for a long long time, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, it finally happened first of October officially. Yeah. Technically, we're, go we're going <laughs> we're going to go into the reality, yeah. <laughs> of course, uh, as you've been finding out. There's also um, it's not at the white paper stage. I don't believe down in England, but they've got at least got the the kind of chats about it just yeah, now. So you know, it's coming. Let's be honest, yeah. it's coming, yeah. and it happens every time, doesn't it? Every time there's a, a a market, a business, an area, then government steps in, tries to put a lot of kind of blocks in place, and you've got to learn the new rules. Yeah. 
uh, can be good and it scares a lot of the cowboys away because, you know, that's happened. We, we buy to let slum landlords yep. and stuff. It can be bad because, wait a minute, you're not doing that. You're just trying to make money here, Mr. Government. You know, yep. it's, it's, it's never a black and white thing, is it? But it's came in. Uh, you've been <laughs> all over it. You've had, <laughs> you've been up all night. Yep. It's not just your new daughter. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's, <laughs> it's the Scottish government legislation that's been keeping <laughs> you up. So what have you found out? Where are we? What kind of things have been rolled out? What are you starting to see? So predominantly, so I think the first thing that we need to really talk about is this legislation is like, what is the purpose of it? So, yeah. so <laughs> it's funny because obviously when I mean, you read any of the council you know, policies, uh, they're all saying the main purpose of it is for health and safety. Yeah. Whereas when it was initially introduced and the government, you know, they were making it out to say it's to help the, you know, the rental market for, you know, first like tenants yeah. to open up the rental market for them because there's not enough properties for them. So oh, first of all, there's a, there's a conflict there uh, yeah. already. But let's talk about the legislation. So a lot of the points make sense right. because it, it, it does address health and safety concerns because a lot of people especially in this industry, we're not following these sort of um, rules. And like you say, cowboys that just try to... It really was the Wild West. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And people just come in and like, I've got a property, I'm not doing anything to it, let's just stick on Airbnb. And if I get a booking, I get a booking. If I don't, yeah. then tough. Uh, um, so that's the kind of people you're getting. Yeah. So the main focus is like, across all, policy, uh, all, all councils, what I've seen as the main thing is, you know, like having... And people in the protege that have done protege or people are investors that have property already, they will have all these things anyway. So like yes. you're... You know, your gas safety, your EICR, your um, PAT testing, your EPC, um, your fire safety, yeah. th th that sort of stuff. It's standard yeah. across kind of all... Standard yeah, stuff, of, yeah, default so, things you would think of. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what they've made standard across all uh, all councils. Right. I think the one thing they've added is like Legionella um, testing, right. which is not with every council. Some councils are, some councils are not, ah, which is a bit, aye. you know, okay. tricky, uh, tricky there as well. Yeah. Um, and then you've got floor plans as well. So you need floor plans to be submitted. Um, right. Outlaying where the smoke alarms are, where the carbon monoxide is, or where the fire exits are, you know. So right. that has to be all outlaid at a scale of 1 to 50. Right. Um, that's what they've um, initially ah, so said. There's these wee precise things about it. Yeah. Because the, the point is, we need to be licensed, don't we? Yeah. That's the thing about it we have to apply. Whereas before, oh, just get it and start working. Nobody's yeah. watching you. Nobody's really looking yeah. at you. But now it's like, no, let's get control of this industry, yeah. you know, and good and bad, obviously, yeah. about that. So I need to apply, I need to be registered, I need to be approved, everything else, etc. Yeah, it's all these kind of things. So on that note, actually, I should probably clarify as well. Yeah. So for people that don't know this, uh, I'm sure most people in this industry will already know it because it affects them. Yeah. Um, but so if you were already operating before the 1st of October, yeah. You then have up until the first of April to apply for the licensing, right? Um, and then you, you could still operate up until uh, the first of April Covered without until license. Yeah. I need to be retrospective and right. Exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, if you're not operating before the first of October and it's a new property you're looking at, mm -hmm. then you cannot operate um, unless you have a license right. or a temporary license. Right. Now, since we're on the temporary license, I'll speak a little bit about that. So not every council is offering a temporary license. So that's where <laughs> it gets a couple. It's kind of shows the madness of yeah, it, doesn't exactly. it? You know, you, you hear about it, I think, well, that sounds quite sensible. Yeah. You know, it's some politician shouting into a microphone, yeah. we're going to do this. And, oh, that's, that sounds really good. Yeah. But then, of course, reality unfolds and it's a bit of a mess. And exactly. Some authorities are ahead of the game and they're yeah. ready. Some haven't got the resources. They've, exactly. They've not got the skills and they're all over the place. So, yeah. so some have got temporary, some don't have temporary licenses. Yeah. Yeah. So the ones that have got temporary... Um, so. Actually, can I, can I go back to a certain yeah, point, go right? For it. So I want to explain first of all as well um, the different type of uh, licenses and right. different type of short-term letting. Right. So the majority of people listening here, investors mm -hmm. uh, in this industry, they're probably looking at secondary letting. So secondary letting is when it's not your principal home mm -hmm. and you're using it specifically for the purpose of service accommodation. Sure. You then also get home sharing, mm -hmm. which is. Um, you know, you've got a room in your house or two rooms in your house yeah. and you're, you're putting them on Airbnb or whatever, booking.com to share your house with somebody. Right. Uh, and then you get um, home letting as well. So mm -hmm. Home letting is when it's your principal home, mm -hmm. but you're, say for example, you work abroad quite a lot of time, oh, you're away somewhere right. uh -huh. and then you're letting your home on Airbnb or whatever it is while yeah. you're away, mm -hmm. but it's still your principal kind of home. Yeah. So that's the different types of, you know, short-term letting you can right. get. Right, gotcha. So just to be kind of, clear on that yeah so in edinburgh for example you can get a temporary license for home letting or home sharing right to give you a feel of what it's like to do do that right which i don't don't see how it makes sense but because obviously if you are going to be doing that 
you, you'll be looking to do a secondary letting as opposed to home sharing or a home yeah, letting. But they allow you to do that for um, home sharing or home letting. Uh -huh. If a secondary letting, which majority of the people listening will be involved in, yeah. they're not doing any temporary licences. So <laughs> you can't get a temporary licence. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> it's the same with uh, Glasgow. Glasgow mm. don't doing temporary licences at all. Just at all. At all. None just of the nothing. Home sharing or anything. Um, right, okay. So not, 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 not at all. Oh and Dundee. So what Dundee was, if you're buying an existing SA, mm -hmm. then you can apply for a six-week license, temporary license. You normally right. hear back within two weeks about that. Right. So then you can initially get a six-weeks license, and within that six-week period, you apply for your full license. Right. And then while that full license has been determined, that that temporary license will be extended up until that period. Right. Um, so you can operate. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Gotcha. So. I suppose they're a bit lenient in that way, but sure. in, on the back end, Dundee are also one of the strictest in terms of the licensing as well, from what <laughs> I can see, uh, because they've gone down more the HMO route where, right. you know, you need specific um, like activity areas, you need specific space in the room, right. you need specific space, like measurement-wise um, or floor space-wise in the living room, the kitchen, uh, the dining area, wow. uh, or the bathroom, for example. So they are a bit more... I don't have all the measurements and you can have a look at their, obviously their website to have yeah. a look at the, the, the in-depth kind of information on that. But that's the only council so far that I've seen. And obviously there's, hundreds, there's not hundreds of councils, but there's loads of councils. Yes. I've only looked at a few of them because it is quite extensive in terms of reading all that material as well. Yeah. Um, but this is the thing, be... this is live. This yeah. is really unfolding in yeah. front of us, isn't it? That's, yeah. a, that's a beauty of having uh, yourself on. So we, we're recording this on the 10th of the month. Yeah. It'll come out later once it's been edited and stuff. Uh, it just officially started on the 1st. Yeah. And quite frankly, if you're an investor in a specific authority, and you oh, I didn't know about that. If you go into your site, you might see nothing there at all. Yeah. It might just say, oh, sorry, we've not got around to that yet, or yeah. please hold. Yeah. Whereas you might be in a local authority that's, right, let's go, here's our link, start applying, here's all the stuff we need. Yeah. It's a real mixed bag at the moment, isn't it? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And like the big one, like Edinburgh, Glasgow, they're, they're not like, to be honest, Edinburgh was like maybe two days late um, right. for <laughs> publishing it. <laughs> Glasgow was on time. Um, Dundee was only like Friday there that was they it just yeah, Friday? <laughs> just Friday there that they published it. Um, so like some are like, like South Lanarkshire, for example, they're not even produ uh, you know produced it yet. Nothing there. Uh, nothing there. So it is, it is a mixed bag. But yeah, yeah. It goes back to you know that question that everybody was asking was, are, do the council have capacity to deal with this? Yeah, exactly. Do you know, like if they, they weren't given that much of a time scale. No. Nope. By the looks of it, they're not really expanding their teams. Yeah. And they're expecting to obviously deal with, like, take Edinburgh, for example, thousands and thousands of applications. There must be, you know, at least 10,000 uh, short-term, um, like, you know, short-term uh, properties in Edinburgh. Um, and they're having to, you know, to, to deal with that. So it is, you, you know, kind of up. A governmental mess. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah, going to yeah. say. Yeah, just just across the board. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's one of those. In, I mean, I do. I actually feel for a lot of the councils and the people yeah. who are in there because yeah. you know some government dude stands in front of a camera and it's so easy to talk. So easy just to say something. Ah, we're going to do this for this reason. And you've pointed out they've actually come yeah. up with two reasons, so we don't even know which one they're picking. <laughs> uh, and then it's like, yeah, so uh, if you can just deal with that, please. Uh, we're, we're not going to give you any extra money. We're not even going to give you a clear-cut guide on how we want this yeah. to happen. Just just work that out yourself, okay, please. Yeah. Thanks very much. It's, Aye, great. And then, of course, that then becomes a complete pain in the neck. Uh, Cost-wise, would, would we know so far what kind of things are rolling out uh, for applications? So, cost, well, first of all, that council thing you said you feel sorry for them. Well, not so much because <laughs> not remember, so much. <laughs> it, it's them that have put these additional, you know, stuff yeah. into the policies as well That's right. to try and make it even more difficult. Yeah. So, even for themselves <laughs> and for you know the people operating as well. So I don't know so much about feeling sorry for them, um, uh, but yeah, I get your point as well. Uh, in terms of cost-wise, the cost varies across all councils. Right. The cheapest I've seen is about two hundred, two hundred fifty pound um, right. for a license. Uh -huh. And the most absurd I've seen is probably um, Dundee City Council, Good where if you, I looked at, I think it was five plus people, it was like £980 uh, around wow. about that amount. So it is. So yeah, even that's different. Yeah, exactly. So it's like the council just like, look, how much do you think we can get away with like yeah. charging people? And they're like, okay, let's just, let's just charge this um, silly, God. silly number, oh, um, which is, yeah, frustrating. But, yeah. you know, it's part and. Like you have to look at, you, you always mention that as well, you have to look at right, where do we where do we stand now? Yes. Right, okay, what are options do we have and how do we overcome it? That's it. One problem that we may not be able to overcome, and uh, I mentioned that to you briefly before we started this year as well, is Edinburgh. Um, yeah. And the fact that they've decided that they're not going to allow uh, any, or offer any licences to any 
uh, tenement blocks or you know shared entrances <laughs> or communal areas. Um, and if which, someone knows Edinburgh, exactly, that's an obstacle. Exactly, because yeah, this isn't you know if someone's listening in from uh, Leafy Kent with uh, <laughs> you know the houses are a mile apart or something, yeah. uh, that's not the case in the capital city, is exactly. it? Exactly, exactly. It's all tenements, pretty much. Exactly. You like um, I can remember last time if you go in Edinburgh, yeah, it's the outskirts. Yeah. Absolutely, exactly. you see a lot of that's houses right. and you could do that. But when you're having tourists coming into the city, they don't want to live on the outskirts of the city. They want yeah. to live, live near, like, you know, Royal Mile, Edinburgh Castle, you know, yeah. um, the cathedral. You know, they want to do all these sort of things um, in the centre of the area um, and, like, the surrounding areas in the centre, yeah. which are all predominantly tenements. Yeah. And that's where the majority of the short-term uh, rental operators are as well. Right. So I'm still waiting to hear back. I've obviously raised this question with uh, the ASSC, um, to see whether they're going to help, and ASSC is the the kind of the Scot is the Scottish version of the self catering kind of council. Right. Okay. And um, so if you are so if you are doing it yourself, it's something to be good to be involved in because they do it? help with a lot of information. Right. Um, okay. And they're there to su support the self caterers in Scotland as well. Good. Especially with this licensing as well. Um, yeah. As much as they disagree with this whole licensing as well. Yeah. They've completely. come to the conclusion, same as ourselves, is that it is what it is. Aye. How do you now overcome it? And uh, you know. Kind of get, get over this. So that's the key thing about Edinburgh is that they're, right. they're not going to do it. However, they have said that they will make an exception based on a few things right. um, if you can provide evidence of. So then the few things they mentioned is neighbour's consent or support. Right. So if you can provide evidence of that. You can provide evidence of how, how long you've operated previously. Ah, okay. And if you've had any complaints uh -huh. or not had any complaints. So uh -huh. if you have not had any complaints, obviously it goes in your favour. Uh, the frequency of the booking or the you know the intensity of the usual so if you, are you having like a new person every night if you're having a new sure. person every two nights or is it like person every two weeks or a person every three weeks so how how intense is it is, right. is using your accommodation um and the systems to prevent neighbor concerns so like the thing that we mentioned about the noise sensors for example yep. you could show evidence of that like like on our properties, you've got that like history of the past twelve months to show you that there's no noise yeah. ever been created in this property so anybody does have an objection then. They're obviously lying because we can show you the, the yeah. two hard fact data as well. Right. But it's easy enough doing like, for example, neighbour um, support if it's a building with five flats in it, six flats in it. Yep. Some apartments we have is like, you know, buildings with 20 flats in it, 25 flats in it. Yep. Physically going around to 25 people to get their support. Do you know, it's well, first of all, very time consuming. Unlikely that you're know, we going to get them all at the same time. Correct. Um, and thirdly, not everybody's going to support you. There's always uh, one. There's always complain. one. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. So they have made it very, very difficult in that sense. So yeah. I'm assuming there will be a lot of backlash in it, considering that majority of Edinburgh is tenement buildings. Yeah. And majority of the operators in Edinburgh are tenement, and tenement, and tenement buildings. Exactly. So we'll see how we kind of proceed from there. But as as we stand at the moment they're not going to offer licenses for um, tenements. It's that messy stage we're in just now, yeah. isn't it? Obviously hoping for for U-turns in some areas, mm -hmm. hoping for common sense in other areas. Yeah. It's that messy, you know, negotiation back and forth. It's it's the stuff you wish we'd actually just thought about beforehand. You know, it's so typical. You know, yeah. it's the way a government works, you know, exactly. rather than spend the time getting it all lined up as best as possible. No, 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 just open the gates yeah. and then we'll deal with the mess after it. Exactly. That's where we are. Exactly. On the licensing thing, uh, you've kept us good there. You know, some are ready for it, some aren't. Some are charging a couple of hundred, some are up near the thousand pound mark. Also not the same time scales as well, is that right? So time scale wise, they're actually all the same. They right. all said the same time scale, which... And the time scale is ridiculous, so, you know, it's, I don't know why they said the same thing. <laughs> it's all the same, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, for example, um, every council has said, so if you're a new a new applicant, so if you've not had an SA operating before the 1st of October, yeah. so technically you can't operate right now because you don't have yeah. a licence, yeah. you make an uh, uh, application, there's a time frame of nine months. Right. Now, it's not to say it's going to be nine months, yeah. it could be shorter than that, but yeah. realistically speaking... If they've got nine months to do it, council's probably going to take nine months to do it. You better believe uh, it. You can see that in the planning department's already. Exactly, I mean, exactly. So nine months. Um, <sighs> if you're already operating before the 1st of October and you're already, you're making an, an application, but because you're already operating, uh -huh. they're giving a th they're, they're allowing themselves three extra months. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 12 months um, from when you made the application to then um, for them to determine it. And the reason they've given 12 months is because all applications need to be in by the 31st of March. Right. At the latest. Right. Uh, and then every every um, basic property has to have a licence and fully be 
either have a license or not have a license shut down mm -hmm. or have a license by July 2024. Right. So that's when they're giving themselves okay. like a 12 month period. So after that, then right. basically that'll be it. Uh -huh. So they say now, but you know what it's like with anything, with any legislation, any kind of changes, it's always up for, you know. Yeah. This um, is it. But all we can it. talk about is what's here now. Yeah. That's the thing. Can we just, you know, go forward with the game? That license itself as well, uh, am I right in thinking you've mentioned that it's, it doesn't cover you for the same amount of time either? That's are some right. of the authorities different as well? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so some areas, like the ones I've looked at, Edinburgh, for example, they're offering one year. Right. Um, Glasgow um, are offering three years. Right. But they've basically, in other words, said depends on how they feel like. <laughs> in other words, so if they want to do less, they could do less as well. Uh, and Dundee have also said M um, three years as well. Right. Um, but th what they are saying is that the, the councils and the, the word they keep using is that they're taking a risk based approach. Right. Which is very vague because, like, <laughs> you know, like what 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 is risk in their eyes or exactly. what, how do they assess risk? You know, it's very it's very they haven't made that very clear. Yeah. So like a risk, like, even when like um for inspections uh -huh. they're saying that obviously because they, they're not physically going to be able to inspect every single property oh, no chance. they're taking a risk based approach so again what is the what is the risk yeah. criteria who's deciding, or, yeah, that? who's deciding that and what where, what properties are they going to go and check um, unfeasible um, on the licensing as well I think one uh, one thing we need to uh, bring up as well is about planning permission right there we go I was going to come yeah. to this one next good so, man good planning man. permission so some cities so Edinburgh for example is a, a Planning um, planning area, mm -hmm. a planning, I think it's a CPA they call it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, um, every doesn't matter whether you're doing secondary letting, home sharing, home letting, mm -hmm. um, you all require uh, planning permission. Right. Um, to get approved, well, it doesn't have to be approved to apply for the licensing. You just have to have the planning permission, uh, planning submitted. Right. So okay. as long as you've got the application number for that. that, and then you right. can apply for. Um, and this is to cover the kind of change of use, is it? From yeah. residential, uh, exactly. commercial aspect. Okay. Exactly, okay. yeah. Um, so you have to submit that along with the floor plan as well. But um, they're really quick. I mean, you can get planning like a day or so, can you? He yeah, says yeah, sarcastically. I guess, uh, yeah. <laughs> 24 hours normally <laughs> oh, a time scale anyway. <laughs> There's so many obstacles trying yeah. to do business. Exactly, there? exactly. Trying to serve people. Yeah. Oh, God. I know. I know. But so <sighs> that's what they've said uh, right. in Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, Glasgow have said that planning uh, permission is only required for flats, so mm -hmm. tenements. Right. Uh, if it's a house, then you don't require planning permission. Ah. It's purely just applying for the license itself. Okay. So it's slightly easier. Yeah. Um, uh huh. Um, but again, it goes down the route where if you are then got a new SA, you are then applying for a license. Your time scale is nine months, so you you, you can't you can't apply because if you're if you've got a project and you're going to do a refurb, whatever, and it's six months down the line, you can't apply on day one no. to then hope that it's only going to be a wee while after after, it. Uh, after that. It can only be done once the property is ready to get all, obviously, the gas safety, the EICR, the pack testing, oh, all that stuff can't God. be done while the property is getting renovated. So once the property is renovated, you then have to apply for a license mm. and then wait for nine months. So what do you do in the nine month void period? Yeah. Like that's a very important question that investors need to think about now. Yeah, exactly. Because nine month void period is a on top of what is it what if they're doing a refurb, for example. Correct. Six you've, months, you've whatever just it is. Paid out the money. Yeah. yeah. That's like what um, like over a year yeah. of waiting of with no income. And the mortgage is just ticking mortgage over. Ticking along and the interest uh -huh. rates are going up and yes. it's not getting cheaper. So <sighs> it's a it's a big thing to consider <laughs> the SE model right now, especially yeah. in this um in this country and this yeah. economy right now, it's very, very difficult. If you're already operating, they have made it slightly easier in terms of that you can still operate in cash flow yeah. while you're um, doing the application, which mm -hmm. you know does help. Because I think I think the misconception is that everybody thinks that everybody's that just a short term accommodation or landlords that they're all multimillionaires. Yeah. I know. Not, like they're not all multimillionaires, like Correct. you know. Like some like yourself are, but you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> no, you're, you're right. Like, you're you know, painted as that image, mm -hmm. you know, the the slum landlord, yeah. the offshore multi millionaire. Yeah. We wish, mm -hmm. you know, it's just not the case. Mm -hmm. But it's just, it happens every time. It's always the small guy and girl that gets it. You know, the the clause twenty four thing. Never against the whole yeah. corporate structure. It was all the mom and pop yeah. landlords that got it. Yeah. Now we've got the licensing stuff, the exact same thing. Yeah. You know, oh, you just need to deal with those costs. You just need to deal with those time scales. Yeah. Oh, it's so infuriating. Yeah. Can you maybe see some of those landlords thinking about their asset and thinking, well, okay, I'll, I'll start the application, but in the meantime, I'm going to rent it out as a standard buy to let. Can you see them thinking that aspect? Because we've got to try and protect that asset. The thing is, previously, maybe yes. Yeah. Right now as well, you know it's not a market for landlords. Like, everything is against landlords. Yeah. Um, 
tenant rights are way too high and to try to find that right tenant, mm. it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Um, like even the market right now, you see it in general. It's yeah. like people are di- like literally begging for flats to rent because yeah. a lot of landlords don't want to do it. Yeah. Although they're, I'm not so it goes the same way. Like we can't make out every tenant as bad. The no, same way we no. can't make every, every landlord uh, make Correct. it out as bad as well. So you have to look at both sides of the story. Yeah. Um, but obviously they're decent tenants as well. Like people are offering six months rents up front, you know, 12 months rents up front just to get a place. Just to get there. Because landlords are not wanted to go down that route. So yeah. SA was the other option, strategy of them holding the property. Mm-hmm. But if they can't do the SA route, I see, my personal opinion is majority of landlords are selling up. Mm-hmm. I've already spoke to a few landlords and like, the ones obviously we predominantly do rent to SA, yeah. um, as you're aware. So I've already spoke to my landlords about, you know, this is what the situation is. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the couple I spoke to, they're leaning more towards selling their property rather really? than putting it back to a tenant because they've seen like working with us, um, how easy it's been for them. They don't yeah. get any hassles. They don't get like you know, a, a phone call on a Sunday, oh, my light bulb's out, you know, yeah, <laughs> that, that kind sweet. of stuff. Um, so it's been so easy to deal with. They, they can't, and before us, they were all with tenants. Uh-huh. But now they can't see themselves going back to tenants and realising how easy it once is. Once you've seen that. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you know? So it is great for landlords to, you know, for working with people like us where they can just rent it for a fixed amount and then yes. they don't have to worry about it. They're still yeah. getting their rent. So it's sort of like a buy to let. Yeah. But, you know, then we, we go and do operate a service accommodation and whatever we do, but the landlord's getting their fixed amount yeah. every month. Uh, but majority of the people we spoke to, landlords, they're like, we want to move to more towards selling off the property as yeah, opposed to putting it back to a just, tenant. Just had enough. Yeah. Yeah, and these are the, the implications, isn't it? It's the yep. consequences of things. You know, someone just writes a wee law or comes up with a wee idea. Yep. All of a sudden, there's a lot of kick on from yep. that. That's the thing. Exactly. Okay, uh, anything else around that part? Insurances and stuff? So What's your things there? So two things with insurance. Well, obviously, you need your uh, building content insurance, yep. um, which is standard across uh, any, bike. well, not content, but no, building actually, is anyway for... Um, for uh, for buy to lights, for example. Yep. The all other aspect is public liability insurance. Right. That's in now, well. some councils have said two million. Ah. Uh-huh. Some councils have said five million. <laughs> so just be careful, obviously, which council oh, you're really. applying for to make sure that you're aware of what the actual um, amount is. Right. Uh, whether it's two million or five million. I know the ASSE did fight against the councils to say five million is a ridiculous amount. Um, it should be more towards the two million. Yeah. But yeah, you can't That's win against the councils, let's be honest. <laughs> no, exactly. This whole to and fro. Yeah. Okay, so we've covered loads of stuff here. The funding, the services we're providing, the license application, uh, the planning changes. We've got uh, the stuff we've ju- just done there with insurances. Yep. Anything else to tick off at the moment? Um, we've covered all I suppose the occupancy as well. So you much. look at the occupancies as well, because a lot uh-huh. of the, predominantly people were thinking, like, if I've got a two-bedroom property, it's four people, or... You know, right. like not obviously with a with a normal buy to let is different, mm-hmm. but with the SA, uh, the predominantly you would be thinking two person per room. Yeah. Um. So if you've got two bedrooms, four four people, three bedrooms, six people, four bedrooms, eight people, you need to look at that because every council is now different in terms of what they're offering for they maximum occupancy. So right. like Dundee, for example, um, I've said if it's a one bedroom, then it's two people. If it's a two bedroom, there's only three people. Right. If it's uh, three bedrooms, only five people, for example. So you need to kind of um, be careful of what council you're applying in and what council you're operating in right. uh, to know what your maximum um, occupancy is. One other thing that you're required to do while we're still on the licence, there's so much on this, by the way, Richard. Yeah. I'm sorry, you know, like, I, I, I probably... I tell you, I love the, the fact is, you've done this. You, we need at least like a two hour, you know, yeah. co- a, a, just purely on licensing because there's so much involved in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so another aspect is as well, once you actually lodge the the application for the licensing, mm-hmm. you, the, 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 the council give you a template and you have to display that publicly at your property ah. for everybody to see uh, for a minimum of 21 days. Right. And that's so if anybody wants to make an objection, uh, whether exactly, <sighs> yeah. So again, help helping us, you know. Um, wow. <laughs> so if anybody wants to make a, any objection, and it's our duty to make sure that it doesn't fall off the wall or, you know, right. it doesn't get like, trampled by somebody or somebody doesn't take it off, we need to be there to make sure that doesn't happen as well. Um, but it has to be there for a minimum of 21 days to allow anybody to make any objections. However, oh the objection is going to have to be in writing. Ah, so okay. That may deter That's a few something. people. Yeah, yeah do you know, least. like, because some people, if it's a phone call, people love a phone call. Oh, yes. So when they have to write a letter to, right. to, to post in, it's obviously not as easy for some people to do. Yeah. Um, so it, it does help slightly there. But right. that's another thing you need to consider. And once the 21 days are over, then you have to 
physically um, self self attest basically saying that you've had it up for 21 days and then give it to the council as proof that you have had right. it up for 21 days quickly covering once you had your license you then need to post a, a letter it's like a template you get as well mm-hmm. for every one of the neighbours uh, oh. doors and that just has like which op- which property is operating as a short term let uh, what the um, contact number is daytime contact number for the manager mm-hmm. emergency contact number for the manager you know stuff like that so it's wow. yeah it's going to be interesting they're rolling out a few challenges yeah, uh, yeah. but hey that's that's how we operate isn't mm-hmm. it we're problem solvers so these things are just problems they're puzzles and work our way through it you're certainly yeah. on the ball that's for sure I really appreciate your time uh-huh. doing this because uh, it's going to be great information for folks listening in but I want to finish on a high yeah. I want to <laughs> with a lot of challenges <laughs> let's finish on a high you're doing great uh, you're operating great you're helping so many investors which is fantastic and you've got even bigger plans Absolutely. can you can you share some more we've got some exciting news in the pipeline yeah so I thought I, I, I thought it leaves exclusive for you Richard yes, you know? <laughs> I love it I love it so um, we've got obviously big Based on currently what's going on um, in this country, the legislation, the difficulties that we're facing, we're like, okay, let's let's look at somewhere, uh, you know, at, uh, an area where you know it's pro business. You can there's a lot of opportunity. There's still growth. The economy is growing. Yep. We, what, what kind of places like that? And we can do our same model of operating a service accommodation. Mm-hmm. So over a month and months of research, I came to the conclusion that is going to be um, Dubai. Dun, so. Dun, dun. Yeah, um, so we're, we're, we're looking at um, Dubai. We hopefully should be set up there uh, within the next month anyway. Wow. Um, and we're going to be heading out there and looking at, you know, properties. And we're, we're, going, to go, we're going to go down two routes for investors. So right. we're going to go, well, actually three routes for investors that we're going down. So we're going to be offering fixed returns uh-huh. um, where you just give us a lump of money and then you get a return every mm-hmm. month for one year, two year, whatever the terms may be. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're looking at um, investing in, so S, we're going to be doing uh, rent to SA. Mm-hmm. So specifically having these properties for an investor yeah, and then we'll manage it for them for a fee, right. but it'll still turn over a, a good, decent cash flow as well. Brilliant. Or the third option is that you buy a property out there and we'll uh-huh. manage it as an SA for you as well. So right. that's the three routes that we're going down with the, with the investors anyway. Fantastic. And we already have a few lined up uh, already interested when you look at them with the numbers, like, yeah. you know, your, your eyes are going to pop. Like, oh, I did not think of this before. Like, really? numbers are, yeah. Supply and demand is yeah. pretty good, yeah, shall exactly, we say. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and it's a booming economy as well. Yeah, and it's well, exactly. Seemed, That's like, all you hear Everybody about. else is going recession. Like, Dubai's not, like, anywhere yeah. near a recession right now, so. Wow. Yeah. This is exciting. Yeah. Could you even have contemplated this at the start no, of your journey? No, absolutely not. It's like, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Can't believe it. It's like it's, it's, it goes back to like sort of what we learn at Prodigy as well. Once you learn something, yeah, it's like t- 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 you know the great analogy would be like gold mine area. Do you know? Right, right. You know, right. So you you start off the small gold mine area. You uh-huh. know, it might be a quarter of a mile, whatever it is. Yep. You learn everything about that. Yep. And you learn all the aspects of it. Once you know the ins and outs of it, you can do it anywhere. Correct. You can run Same. those numbers. Yeah, because yeah, people get the wrong idea. Or something. They say, oh, I go my name. That means I'm going to be handcuffed to that area. That means I'm limited. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Different mindset. You're learning how to become an expert and yeah. run the numbers, say, work with contacts in yeah. there, everything about it. Then that means you can do it anywhere. That's exactly. the point of it. You know, exactly. That's the, the different mindset. And all of a sudden, you're, you're go my area is you're running it in Dubai. Exactly. <laughs> same principle. Same, same principle. Like oh, I said, just I learn it. everything about the business, how we operate making the contacts, how it works, how we make sure that what the guest likes, what you know, what the investors like, and then just replicating that in a different country. Yeah. You know, oh, and man. yeah, so, so it's, it's exciting. exciting times. Yeah, exciting times. It really times. is. Wish you all the best with Thank that. Thank you so much. I mean, I'm thinking of my colleagues off camera that the, the people can't see. I'm I'm thinking I should maybe suggest a, a follow up this week in proper interview, maybe in Dubai. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that'd be... I'll still speak to the bosses and try, <laughs> get, try and get that lined up. Get, get, get your business class fly out there. That's a, <laughs> part two. <laughs> <laughs> oh fantastic listen this has been superb my man I knew oh, it was you. going to be good That's but as usual you've exceeded the expectations um, for folks listening in watching in remember whenever it's safe to do so go into the show notes all the links are there follow this man you can already see uh, how he's doing how he's doing great for for himself for other people for investors you might be thinking of that you know you might be thinking of being an investor yourself and getting him to manage one of your properties or investing with him in all the different ventures he's got definitely follow him because he's on an exciting journey that's for sure but listen Bilal for your time today on the show thanks a million thank you for having me Richard it's been a pleasure brilliant thank you 
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I did. Remember, with the guests that you just saw, go into the show notes for the page because all of their links are there so that you can get in touch and to get more information. And talking about getting more information, more guests, more insights, more knowledge, etc., make sure you're subscribed. Get the subscription done, get the notifications on, and then we'll always keep in touch with you every single time a brand new show is going to come out. So thanks for tuning to This Week in Property. <laughs>